I'm now going to talk about Northern Baroque women artists. And for this section, um, I should explain what Northern Baroque means, I guess. Uh, Baroque generally is 17th century. In this case, we'll be going into the late Baroque uh, 17th, a little bit into the 18th century. And uh, we're talking about artists, artists from Flanders, uh, what is today approximately Belgium, the southern Netherlands. Dutch, this is the northern Netherlands. By this time, it is a separate country. So Flanders, the Netherlands. Uh, English, German, and Spanish. Now Spanish sounds a little odd because it's not northern. Spanish is obviously a southern European country. Uh, basically what happened is we started talking about Italian Baroque and of course Italian Renaissance and then they started talking about artists who were north of the Alps and that included just about everything except Italy. Uh, during the Renaissance Spain was often very much influenced by Netherlandish artists so the style uh, in Spain in the Renaissance was very close to what it was in Northern Europe. So basically we've got to put Spain somewhere so we're just sort of uh, attaching it here. Uh, the artist here uh, is uh, a sculptor and there's not a close connection between the North uh, Northern artists and uh, the Spanish artists but we just had to find a place to put her. So we'll be talking about artists who are not Italian in uh, the 17th and early 18th centuries. We're first going to talk about still life painters. And still lifes are paintings of inanimate objects. In French, they're called natur mort, or dead nature. Uh, in German, it's still leben, and that's where we get our word still life. There seem to be quite a few women artists who painted still lifes, uh, particularly in Flanders and especially in the Netherlands. And one of the reasons, of course, is that you, a woman would stay at home and paint a still life. Uh, and she could use uh, things that you would find around a house that would be acceptable for a woman. So uh, we do find a number of women artists engaged in painting still life paintings. Uh, now in Dutch, they don't usually talk about just the still life. They use the word stuke, stuke, or piece. So they talk about them, for example, as bloemenstuke, flower pieces and breakfast pieces and game pieces, game pieces being uh, dead animals, essentially. Uh, we're also going to see uh, some uh, Vanitas still lifes, and I'll explain that when we get there. The first artist we're going to talk about is Clara Peters. Uh, she's Flemish, she's from Antwerp, and as you can see, she's born uh, right at the end of the 16th century in 1594. We don't know the exact date of her death, but uh, probably around 1657. We do have a self-portrait of Clara Peters. And as you can see, she shows herself holding a magnifying glass, which suggests that she must have used the magnifying glass uh, when she was looking very intently at the objects in her still life. And she's also shown in the still life with some of the objects for which she was famous for painting, flowers, um, that metal vessels, and we'll be talking about the details of these later. Uh, we don't know her birth date. We do know that she was baptized on May the 15th of 1494, so pr presumably not too far after the time she was born. Uh, she was married in 1639. And we do not know her teacher. Uh, there's no records that prove this, but it has been suggested that it was an Antwerp still life painter named Osias Bert or Beert. Uh, and I'll show you why. Because when you look at Beert's work, and then you look at Peter's work, uh, you can certainly see some similarities. Uh, in both cases, you have uh, a similar point of view. It's a fairly low point of view, but they're, you're looking down on the objects. Um, there's this repetition of the circular forms and of course a great deal of interest in the textures. Now I'm looking at these things that uh, much is a much later Beard uh, and a earlier Peters. Um, she'd be about 18 when she painted this. And uh, it is a little bit more complex than that of her teacher even at a later date. Uh, part of that is that there's some more objects and also partly she's got a, a table cover on it. So we'll be taking a closer look at her still lives. 
one of the interesting things about Clara Peters is we don't know who the first still life painter was. Um, but she is certainly one of the earliest ones. Uh, she's painted in the very earliest years of the 17th century. And her earliest paintings, uh, she would either be 13 or 14 years old. And I wanted to find one of these, and I found this picture on the web uh, of a still life signed and dated Clara P. 1607. So she would be either 13 or 14 years old when she painted that. Um, it's a bit simpler than the things that she does later, but it is absolutely incredible when you think of a young teenager, about 14 years old, uh, painting this. Uh, all of the objects uh, are rendered with a great deal of detail. Uh, she's very much aware of the textures uh, and very carefully placed with the repetition of the curving forms and then the vertical forms of the uh, goblets uh, and the candle here. She's known for the very detailed, precise uh, imitation of uh, the different textures uh, that are shown at the various objects. And she usually picks a wide range of different materials, uh, different metals, flowers, uh, as you can see, different kind of foods, uh, china, just all sorts of things, uh, which really shows off her skill. Uh, one of the things she's particularly known for is painting these very ornate metal beakers or uh, goblets or vessels. Uh, and we're going to see in some of those, you see this in the, the, uh, over at the edge of this detail. And we'll be seeing those in a number of paintings and talk a little bit more about them. Um, generally, when they're talking about still life, you just call it a still life. And sometimes what they'll do is they'll say a still life with, and then they start naming everything in the painting. Uh, and this one does the same thing. I generally don't remember that long stream of, of things. I always think of this one as the still life with pretzels, uh, which you can see uh, down here in the lower, uh, lower right-hand corner as you look at it, right? Um, this is in the Prado, uh, the Museo del Prado in Madrid. And as you can see, it's from about 1611 when she would have been around 18 years old, uh, fully accomplished. Um, once again, quite complica complicated. She keeps everything very orderly uh, by repeating the curving forms uh, in the different vessels uh, and uh, in the flowers and, and, of course, the curves of the pretzels and different objects. And then you have that contrasted with the verticals uh, of the, the vase and flowers, which are, of course, uh, curving forms, but the whole overall uh, shape would be a vertical. Uh, the, the metal goblet right in the center, which we saw a uh, little detail of that. Uh, and then, of course, this, uh, the, the different um, vessels that you see that you also provide that vertical uh, interest. This is a particularly interesting still life. Um, it's in the museum in Karlsruhe. It's up on the second floor. And uh, as you can see, in this case, she's got a vertical image. Uh, and she has the three tall objects, once again, the vase of flowers uh, with the, some kind of earthenware, perhaps uh, some kind of ceramic uh, vessel. And then she contrasts this with the different very ornate uh, uh, metal vessels. Um, there's coins, uh, there's seashells, uh, all in great detail. But one of the things that's particularly interesting about this picture is you look at this detail, And um, the colored pictures are the ones that I took in the museum, and the black and white one are uh, a more professional photograph. Um, but I think that you can see that in those nodules uh, that uh, swell out like little convex mirrors, uh, you see over and over and over again a kind of uh, abbreviated self-portrait of the painter uh, with her hand uh, ready to uh, paint or draw. Uh, and a little, a little uh, window in the background. So there she is showing over and over and over again. Uh, this particular work of art is in uh, the National Museum of Women in the Arts in Washington, D.C. And uh, this one is the food. 
uh, with the, I, in a way a little bit humorous, where the cat has gotten into the seafood uh, and has uh, uh, claimed <laughs> its prize. It's going to have some of that fish. Uh, of course, uh, Flanders, uh, the Netherlands, uh, the lowlands are quite close to the sea. Uh, they, um, they would eat a lot of sea fish, and so here we have the, the different bounty of the sea uh, portrayed. Have to do a little details. There's the, the fish and the cat. Uh, this one seems to be fairly uh, sort of free, a freedom about the uh, image. This one is not dated, fortunately. And uh, different shellfish, I guess, some kind of shrimps or prawns and oysters. I don't know my seafood, I'm afraid. Uh, here's another one. And as I, once again, I just put in uh, what I think of as. Uh, you know, they've got a pie in the middle, so it's the still life with the pie to me. Uh, the same kind of things can be said where you're, you're looking uh, at the uh, variety of objects with all these different shapes. And in this case, obviously, uh, the subject is, is good food to eat. Uh, the intricacy of the pie crust contrasted with these uh, cooked fowl over here. Uh, different, just different stuffs. And once again, uh, circular forms. Uh, and vertical forms, and a kind of um, simplified tonality here, uh, because you're playing with these various uh, golds and off-whites uh, and uh, relatively neutral tones, but it doesn't seem uh, boring at all. It just seems very, very subtle and very rich. And uh, here we have a detail of uh, some of the different textures that she's showing.